you know, Charlie and I were humans too, which means that when we feel like pain somewhere, we're like, uh, we got to get rid of this pain. And it, my wrist and elbow, there, it's hurting. So can you, you know, address that? Can we work on that right now? And we get it. And it makes sense. It's like, hey, well, there's weak stuff there. But what was crazy was that every single time I would go back to work on his hands and wrists, like maybe some stuff would hold, but a lot of it wouldn't. I would be reworking on things over and over and over again. You know, eventually we went back to total body MAT, which is, you know, very taxing on the, well, can be very taxing on the practitioner, which is why we weren't doing it. But pretty much we had to work on everything in your trunk because everything was shot. And what's crazy about that is that your elbow wrist issue, like you just stopped commenting about yeah, it. Yeah, it just became a total non-issue. Welcome to the Exercise is Health podcast. Where we're talking about exercise, health, and the interconnectedness of the two. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we will be coming to you every single week from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Exercise is Health podcast. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we are coming to you from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg in Schaumburg, Illinois. Now, at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, we believe your health is your most valuable asset. Your health is one of the biggest influencers of the quality and quantity of time that you have. And while there are many aspects of health, our expertise is exercise. Exercise has been proven time and again to not only improve your health, but also increase your longevity and improve your quality of life. And if you are looking for a way to exercise on your own while still receiving the quality of guidance that we give our clients here at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, then you need to check out our virtual membership program. To learn more about this program, head to matschaumburg.com and click on the membership tab. Now today, we are talking about one of our specialties here at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, and that is muscle activation techniques. And we are going to be discussing kind of our own personal stories, what we've been noticing recently with our bodies, and how MAT has been able to help with those things. Because as we've said in podcast episodes past, Julie and I prioritize getting MAT at a minimum of once a week. And with that, we've noticed some really cool changes within our bodies and we want to share a little bit about what's going on. So we got inspired to do this episode because um, as a lot of you listeners know, Charlie and I just had our first baby and and things have really changed in our life since we've had our had had Avalon and it's been super crazy and it's also been a big change in our physical like in our physical bodies as well, not only me being in this postpartum period, but also Charlie for a period of time taking on a lot of my clients, having to work more. Also during, you know, for about six weeks, I think, I didn't get to work on you for MAT. So mm-hmm. that was a huge change. I don't think you've ever gone six weeks no. without getting MAT. Not since I started. Plus the extra physical demand of doing more MAT, Mm -hmm. you know, lifting people's limbs for eight hours a day. And it really took a toll on you. And also the pregnancy and postpartum period really took a toll on me. So Mm -hmm. I think we've gotten to play with a lot of cool stuff and we've, I've definitely learned some cool things and that's why we want to share with you because it's just been such a new adventure for us, not only in our life, but also how our bodies are physically doing. Yeah. Like you said, I mean, that was, far and away the longest period I've gone without any kind of consistent MAT work. And my body definitely noticed a difference. And I mean, I could really feel that things that had never been an issue before all of a sudden started being an issue because I wasn't getting tuned up on a regular basis and there was an increased physical demand from work. And if you've ever experienced MAT, you know the practitioner is physically doing a lot during the session. It's not like something where the practitioner is just kind of standing back and pushing on you a little bit. No, especially with the RX process, which is what I do. It can be exhausting after, you know, seeing, like Julie was saying, eight hours of clients, sometimes more in a day. And that's just a lot of kind of physical labor, a lot of hands-on labor. And so with that, I was definitely noticing a lot of different things in my body as far as things that were symptomatic that had not been symptomatic before or had not been symptomatic for years. And But what's been really cool is MAT has been able to help tremendously with those things since I started getting worked on again. 
So I think that most, the biggest thing that we notice with your body, Charlie, is that it's something we talk to our clients a lot about. It's something that I think our weekly sessions really prevent, but those, all those little things mm-hmm. weren't addressed when they were little mm-hmm. and they built up to be big things. Yes. And I think you had two, like two big things and then some overall stuff. Yeah. So the big thing was like your right wrist and forearm elbow yeah. area yeah. and then your right calf mm-hmm. and then the overall stuff just feeling more fatigued more run down you do something called you check your hrv in the morning mm-hmm. which you should probably tell everyone about but that was also con- consistently off yeah. during that time period so we had to work through those issues and i think in the beginning at least for your wrist and your wrist and forearm mm-hmm. issue that was the biggest issue i think because Definitely. That was so crucial for you in terms of working on individuals Mm -hmm. and it would just bother you every single hour. Yeah. And I always felt so bad because you would come home from work, you know, icing it and, you know, smushing on it and like, you know, all the things that everyone does just to get temporary relief. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we first when I first got back and started working on you about six weeks postpartum. You know, we started in the hands and wrists and I was working on those, working on those, working on those with like very little change, Mm -hmm. I would say. I mean, you might feel felt better for a little bit, but then it would just kind of go right back to it. And so that was that was quite frustrating. I know for you, but also for me feeling like, wow, I'm doing the best I can and I'm I'm trying to help you. And there's definitely muscle weaknesses here. But why isn't this changing your symptom? Right. So let me jump in and say that, yeah, this elbow thing that was really debilitating in a way where yeah, I would get this kind of this shooting pain from kind of the back, uh, what's called, it's called the, the lateral epicondyle area. So the back out, outside part of my elbow, and it would just shoot all the way down my forearm to my wrist and my wrist would just buckle. Like it would just feel like it would go past my wrist all the way to the tips of my fingers. And it would just feel like my entire wrist and hand would just go weak and it'd just be this dull ache a lot of the time. And then when I would try to lift up somebody's leg or when I would try to push with the test I just get this shooting pain this whole thing will buckle and it was so interesting because like it, that's where it started and then I could f- gradually feel it kind of aching up into my shoulder you know as a weeks went by and then into like my upper trap and neck as a weeks went by and then into my trunk and so this little thing that started kind of at my elbow quickly progressed all throughout the rest of my body because the rest of my body was compensating around it but so what was really interesting is even though it was about six weeks since you delivered that 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 um, when we started doing regular sessions again, mm-hmm. before that time, before you delivered, there was still some changes in how we were going about kind of working with each other because of the physical nature of MAT. You know the physical requirements. You were not able to perform some of the, especially like the trunk tests on me. You know, right. I, you know I'm a bigger guy to begin with, uh, rel- relative to your size, and so because of that that was preventative to an extent to your ability to perform, you know, some of the tests soon and going through like MATRX. And so, you know, while my body was still getting some exposure to MAT up until the delivery, you know, the, the, the level of MAT that was, that you were able to deliver, you know, it was probably like two or three weeks before that. So, and, and so I say that because like within probably three weeks uh, after you delivered, then that's when that uh, the elbow really started buggering me. And then by the time it was six weeks postpartum, then then everything else was super achy. And, you know, so by that time it had been, you know, eight weeks, nine weeks since like really getting solid MAT, you know, on my body. Yeah. And yeah, it was really, really, really taking a toll. And like you said, it was, you know, even though we do this every day and we talk to our clients about this every day, I was thinking, all right, I just need my hands and wrists worked on. And in part also, hey, hands and wrists are a heck of a lot easier to physically work on with somebody than, you know, their trunk and everything like that. So I thought that would be a nice kind of stepping in place for you. Yeah. And so we started with the hands and wrists. And like you're saying, Leah, like I would notice you know, some improvement. We'd get range of motion back. We'd get, you know, strength improvement. And it it would be good for a day or so. And then as soon as like I went back to the volume of work that I was doing, you know, within a day, the, the, the aches and the pains and that, that shooting pain was back and it just wasn't progressing. And 
like you said, it was frustrating for you. It was frustrating for me because obviously, you know, this is, this is our livelihood. This is, you know, how we are able to pay our bills and how we're able to keep serving our clients and, you know, put food on our table, pay our mortgage, everything like that. So that was really frustrating for me as well, because even though I was still able to see clients, I felt like the, uh, the quality of my work wasn't where it could be because it was, I mean, like there were times where it felt like my knees were going to buckle with this just a shooting pain going through my entire arm up into my neck every time I do a test. So what I think is really interesting about this story, because we'll get, we'll get around to the solution in a moment, but you know, Charlie and I were humans too, which means that when we feel like pain somewhere, we're like, uh, we got to get rid of this pain and it, my wrist and elbow there, it's hurting. So can you, you know, address that? Can we work on that right now? And we get it and it makes sense. It's like, Hey, well there's weak stuff there. But what was crazy was that every single time I would go back to work on his hands and wrists, like maybe some stuff would hold, but a lot of it wouldn't, I would be reworking on things over and over and over again. And so it was like, okay, well, eventually I don't know when did I start doing total body on you again maybe eight weeks postpartum yeah it's, it, I would say it was near the end of May okay. so even so even longer than that because I think it was probably yeah maybe maybe eight weeks because eight weeks yeah. would have been at the health summit and then I think maybe that following week or something like that we, we started yeah. up again so you went about two months mm -hmm. without some solid MAT and so you know, eventually we went back to total body MAT, which is, you know, very taxing on the, well, can be very taxing on the practitioner, which is why we weren't doing it, remember? Mm -hmm. And so I felt strong enough and ready that I could, you know, work on Charlie. And I don't know how quickly that stuff cleared up, but pretty much we had to work on everything in your trunk because yep. everything was shot. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy about that is that your elbow wrist issue, like you just stopped commenting about yeah, it. Yeah, it just became a total non-issue. Like yeah. it, it completely asymptomatic. And I would say probably, you know, it, it took, because like you were saying, there was a lot to do. Uh, it probably took a, a solid like four sessions to kind of get get my trunks working, trunk working better, get my hips working better yeah. before like around the 4th of July, finally the elbow stuff just completely cleared up. Yeah. And well, to your point, what was crazy about that is during that whole time, when when things were getting better and better, you didn't have to touch my elbow once. Nope. You didn't have to do anything with my shoulders. You nope. know, it was trunk and hips. And mm -hmm. looking back on it now, I mean, I think that's something that kind of deep down I, I knew was going on, but there wasn't anything that we could do about it at the time as far as like getting my trunk working better, getting my right. hips working better. And so it was like, okay, we just got to do the best we can, you know, kind of try to clean this up locally, like at the elbow. But the reality was, is at least my belief is the elbow was picking up extra stress for the trunk that weren't, wasn't mm. working well, hips that weren't working well. And so because of these inefficiencies elsewhere in my body, you know, my, my shoulders probably picking up more stress, which then eventually caused my elbow to try to pick up more stress. And then my elbow may have been the weak link just in, that was a thing that, you know, got really symptomatic and mm -hmm. got really symptomatic. And yeah. then everything else, once we finally got my trunk addressed, once we finally got my hip addre hips addressed, all of a sudden the elbow stuff, I mean, it was just like, cleared up like oh it's like is never an issue in the first place right right and so it's interesting because it was definitely a local symptom mm -hmm. be caused by systemic instability mm -hmm. and you know that's like the beauty that's the one thing i love about mat is like if someone's in pain somewhere your elbow your knee your hip whatever there's no way to quantify that pain. I mean, it's very subjective, right? But what we can quantify, at least with muscle activation techniques, we can see when you have motion limitations, which is one of the biggest uh, indicators that you need MAT. You can see if you're if you do MAT, you can see when there's muscle instability, and you know how, and we can address that and and make it not a, an issue anymore. And so, what's really cool is that when the when the body got stronger mm -hmm. and more stable then the symptoms went away yep. and i and i wouldn't even doubt that if you had 
gone somewhere to get your elbow thing diagnosed that you would have been on a completely different route. Oh, 100%. You know, in terms of maybe going to physical therapy sure. or acupuncture or whatever. Yeah. And and that's that's what one of the things Charlie and I love to do is we say, hey, let's just clean up the muscle system first mm-hmm. and see what that takes care of. Because yeah. it doesn't solve every problem, but it solves a lot of problems in terms of let's just reinstill stability in the body and see what the body takes care of itself. For sure. And I mean, to that point, like if you would have looked at my elbow, like it looked swollen, Mm -hmm. you know, it it was, it it looked like it was just all inflamed And, and I'm thinking to myself, all right, structurally, did I, did I injure something there? Like, did I actually injure something from just overuse and, and whatnot? But to your point, by getting everything else cleaned up around it, by getting you know the muscle of my trunk, the muscles of my hips, and then eventually like the muscles of my shoulders working better. I mean the the elbow is a total non-issue. Like I don't even think about it at all. And and before it was it was tender to the touch. Like you, it, it's not you know every time I would just kind of brush it against something, it was. It was like this shooting pain. I had to like stop myself from like shouting out a curse word because <laughs> it was really, really painful. And you again, you look at it and it looks all swollen. And so I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I may have damaged something in there, but you just got to kind of at least, you know, because it's being our business and whatnot, you got to keep working. And so, but it, w- it was really cool. Or it's been really cool just seeing how all of that 100% has gone away. Mm-hmm. By not working in that area, not working on areas even close to it, but getting the trunk working better, get the hips working better, yeah. and then the, the elbow just completely resolved itself. Yeah, that was really cool for me to see too. Yeah, and then kind of around, uh, well, not around the same time, maybe a little bit after the elbow thing started, I also started getting this calf issue on my right side. I've had calf issues in the past, and you know, normally they they are caused by me kind of overworking in in one manner or another so you know i've been doing more running if you if you watch my instagram stories you'll notice i've been doing a lot of stories you know after a run and talking about my runs and things like that and so you know i've been doing more running and you know as as running does it will put more stress on your your feet and your ankles and your knees and so i was starting to notice this kind of right calf tightness and almost like this right calf strain coming up and it was starting to get increasingly uncomfortable as well. And this probably started, I guess not a couple of weeks after the elbow, maybe, maybe like end of May to early June, it, it kind of started. And I remember distinctly thinking, cause now, you know, Julie's working on me full body and I was thinking, you know, I wonder if I should just tell her, Hey, you know what? I really like it. If you just kind of worked on my feet and, and kind of you know worked through my lower legs and feet and see what's showing up there because this calf thing is really bugging me. But you know, so you know what, I'm, not, I'm just going to keep it to myself and, you know, let her do her thing. And Sure enough, you know, working through my trunk, working through my hips. I remember distinctly it was trunk rotation that we had to work through. It was like we got through trunk rotation and I got up off the table and it was like the calf thing completely gone. And I was like, okay, you know, this this is cool. Like it's it's feeling better and, you know, I'm not noticing anything right now. We'll see how it, how it is when I go running. And sure enough, you know, that Saturday morning, I went for a run. I went for a run and I ran like six miles. Felt great. Actually, it was a Wednesday morning because I'm thinking about the, the Instagram story that I did for it. Yeah. And so it was, a, it was a Wednesday morning and I went for a run, ran six miles. I didn't notice a calf once, like not once at awesome. all. Yeah, no, it was great. And what was so cool is just a couple of days prior to that, we had worked through trunk rotation and knowing, you know, what we've talked about in the past about how, all right, if your foot can't rotate well, your knee's going to have to pick up more stress. Your hip might have to pick up more stress and rotation. Your trunk might have to pick up more stress and rotation. I really believe that what was happening is because my trunk couldn't efficiently rotate well, my lower leg, my foot, my ankle, they were having to pick up more rotation. And that was causing my calf to get stressed out. And kind of like we talked about with my elbow, once the inefficient areas got back up to par, in other words, once my trunk rotation got tuned up, all of a sudden the calf thing, like completely gone, like it was never an issue to begin with. And it's just so cool experiencing that because again, 
like Julie said, we're humans too. And we have to fight this urge of, wow, I'm really symptomatic in this area. So I really just want this area looked at because this must be where the problem is. And I mean, within the last four months, there have been two clear examples with me where by looking at an area completely unrelated anatomically, getting, you know, that area tuned up where actually the, the inefficient muscles are, all of a sudden it takes off stress of the, in, of the symptomatic area and those symptomatic areas become non-issues. So that's just been really cool to experience. You know, it's interesting when I first started doing muscle activation techniques, you know, they always teach you, okay, go where the body's limited, not where they're symptomatic because that's how, you know, muscle activation techniques works on where you're limited and that's the only way you're going to get the body better. You know, but as a new practitioner, my clients would come in, tell me about where their aches and pains are, what they're feeling that's funky. And I would definitely bias my sessions to work on those areas. And what I've noticed is that as I've matured as a practitioner, the more that I don't listen to them in terms of where their symptoms are, or the more that I can train myself to not let that influence what I'm going to work on, the better outcomes they get. Because then I'm truly looking at their body and what their body is telling me versus what their body is symptomatically telling them. Because we have to always remember that the cause of your issue is not the same as where the symptom is being expressed. So yeah, that, that was two great examples that, that you felt. And, and don't worry, we relate as well. When we feel symptoms, we're like, work on that area, please. <laughs> I need it fixed. <laughs> but and we get so much better outcomes and quick outcomes too. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like it's like, you know, in a year, maybe this will be better. Yeah, no. When we're really just truly trying to look at the body and address what the body is telling us is is limited and needing more stability definitely definitely and then the kind of last thing that we'll wrap up with for me that i was noticing is just kind of this general overall achiness fatigue and then sometimes some very like localized tightness in my back and whatnot and you know the thing that that i've always said is look I don't feel the need to stretch and I haven't stretched for eight and a half years. But when that feeling of tightness does come up, that is a definitive indicator for me that I need to get worked on with MAT. And after I get worked on with MAT, that feeling of tightness goes away and I'm completely good. And so I knew that when, all right, my back was starting to feel a little bit tight, you know, the muscles in my hips are starting to feel a little bit tight. I'm like, okay, yeah, it's definitely time for me to start getting worked on. You know, my just kind of these little aches that I never, ever really had before starting to creep up over that, you know, six to eight week period where the the MAT had really slowed down a bit. And then just kind of this general fatigue. And Julie had mentioned, you know, I check my heart rate variability, my HRV every morning. And, you know, that, that would be something that I would definitely recommend to all of our listeners to start doing is, you know, start checking your heart rate variability because that what that will give you is insight into how stressed your body is. And what it measures is these, the variability between each of the heartbeats. So a lot of times we think, okay, if we, if we have a heart rate of 60 beats per minute, that must mean that our heart is beating once every second. And actually what it means is over the course of a minute, it's averaging once a second, but it could be, it could do a beat every 0.8 seconds and then every 1.2 seconds and then every 0.97 seconds. And so there's some variability there. And the more variability there is with your heartbeat, the more what's called the parasympathetic side of your autonomic nervous system is is in control and where versus if there is less variability in your heartbeat the more the sympathetic side of your autonomic nervous system is in control so your autonomic nervous system is the side of your nervous system that as the name would imply kind of controls a lot of the automatic things uh, within your body 
such as your your heart rate, uh, your you know respiratory system, things like that. And so the the autonomic nervous system it has this parasympathetic side and it has this sympathetic side. And sympathetic is typically this fight or flight side. So like when you're really stressed, you know this fight or flight mechanism, versus parasympathetic, which is more relax, rest, and digest. And so the more variability in your heartbeat, the more your rest and digest, relax side of your nervous system is is activate or dominant and so a lot of times that that's what we want and then you know sometimes like when we're going to go work out or whatever we may want more sympathetic activity so you know we can really get up for our workouts things like that but if you're just supposed to be relaxing you don't want that sympathetic side of your nervous system you know in overdrive and so one thing that I do is I check my heart rate variability every morning and there are a lot of apps and heart rate monitors and whatnot that you can use to do that but what I notice is when my body's starting to get more fatigued, uh, my heart rate variability definitely starts dropping. And actually my heart rate variability starts dropping and then I start to notice the fatigue with my body. But the other thing that I notice is every single time Julie works at me with MIT, the next morning I wake up and my heart rate variability is like golden. Like it's way, way better than it is the day that she works on me. So that morning of versus the next day, the next day it's always way better. And so this is what I started to notice with my body is I was starting to get this achiness. I was starting to get, you know, this localized tightness. And then all of a sudden I was also starting to get, you know, this decrease in heart rate variability. And I knew, okay, my, my body's really starting to struggle now. And, and to be honest, I mean, my heart rate variability since getting worked on with Julie, I mean, it's just, like I said, it's been golden. It's been awesome. It's, it's back up to the levels that it was, you know, earlier in the year. And it's, um, everything's going really well from that perspective, all those little aches and pains, I'm not noticing anymore. And the, the general tightness only comes when it's like, okay, yeah, let's like, if we are delaying, you know, getting a session and it's like, okay, yeah, we, we need to, I need to get some work done on me. But aside from that, like it, everything is, is really, really doing well. And so that's another really cool thing about MAT is its ability to not only affect the muscular system, but the corresponding effect on the nervous system and the autonomic nervous system and putting your body in more of a relaxed state, which we see all the time by measuring this heart rate variability. So for me at the probably at the beginning of my third trimester, well, let me scooch back. Charlie was working on with me with RX. And then once we found out I was pregnant, then we were switching to more traditional MAT. The reason being is that with RX, because of the way that it highlights a certain area, and then we address that area, and then we can move on and highlight another area and then address that area. The, the, it, it increases its potency in terms of how things hold in your body and how the body responds. The problem with that is that when you're pregnant, you can't really access every single muscle and you can't really get into the appropriate positions for every muscle. So it's not the best thing to do when you, when you know you're unable to complete an entire area of the body. So obviously, you know, if, if you're pregnant, then there are muscles that we can't access, like the ones that live on the front side of your spine because there's a baby in the way, <laughs> can't get there. And additionally... Ooh, I know we got to say move over so we can work on this muscle. And then additionally, there's a lot of muscle tests that were really hard to get into the appropriate position. Um, whether those were because they were prone, like face down, or because the, uh, you know, the big belly wasn't allowing me to fully fold or rotate fully because the muscles are taking up space in some other manner in terms of stretching out in front. So we were doing more traditional MAT and there were definitely areas that I really felt I needed to get worked on. Like one that where it was a reoccurring one was hip flexion. I just felt like, wow, this is so stressed. And every time we work on it, it feels better. But because I wasn't getting the, like the full RX experience, I felt it really wasn't holding. Plus the stressors on my body, every single minute of every day was getting more and more and more and more. Like, it's not like, oh, well, I went for a run that was stressful. Now I'm relaxed. So let's recover. It's like, oh, I'm living and every day this giant basketball is getting larger and larger. <laughs> so that was kind of the first thing. But the biggest thing that I struggled with when I was pregnant was 
around the time when I transitioned into my third trimester, so the last, you know, 12 to 13 weeks, I developed a severe pain in my pubic symphysis. So the pubic symphysis is the area where your two pubic bones meet, which if you like think about your belly button and then you go downwards, it's that bone that's right up front. That's your pubic symphysis, and there is tissue that connects this area. It's similar to the tissues in your discs and your spine, and this area is held together strictly by ligaments. And what's interesting about this joint, and quite frankly, any joint that's held together just by ligaments, is that there's no active control over this area because ligaments are passive like there's no signal that the brain can send to a ligament to say like contract or relax or manipulate or whoa this area is getting stressed let's let's tighten up and make sure it stays more stable and so the stressors from the pregnancy were really putting a lot of a lot of stress in this area And it was very difficult for me to even walk some days and get up out of bed and flip over. And aside from the weight of like my belly, you know, and the extra weight that I had on my body, but this area, it was just very sharp and felt like it was about to like give out or snap or something, which was an experience I had never felt before. And so if you guys followed me through pregnancy, which I know a lot of you did, just the easy thing that is always recommended to pregnant women, like go for a walk. Like that was incredibly painful for me because almost I it, it's almost like the two pla- the place where the, your two legs meet were so incredibly it was so incredibly unstable so what was very uncomfortable was having all my weight on one leg or all my weight on the other leg the only thing that felt like okay I wasn't gonna snap in half was if two legs were on the ground so if you followed me through my pregnancy, you saw me jump roping a lot. That was comfortable because both my legs were hitting the ground at the same time. It was never one side was having to stabilize all of my weight. And you also saw that I was biking a lot because of this issue. And so, you know, Charlie and I would do all these things with MAT to try to figure out if we could address this issue, work on hip adduction, which is like the muscles that bring your legs together. We worked on, we tried to work on hip flexion, but again, none of these tests we could fully do because of the pregnancy. Luckily, once I delivered Avalon, this issue almost 100% went away. Probably, I would say it's 80% there. Meaning that on most days, I actually don't feel this symptom at all. And the only time I feel this symptom is when my body is pretty run down. So what's interesting and that I'm learning with this postpartum period is that we have to think of our bodies as like we have a certain conditioning level, like a certain tolerance of stressors from exercise that we can handle. And my tolerance to exercise really decreased during my pregnancy because my body was using all of its energy to do something else other than to exercise, right? And that's why like near the end of my pregnancy, I was still moving pretty good, but I wasn't exercising at the level that I was. And so after pregnancy, I kind of felt like, hey, well, I should just jump back into the stuff I was doing, you know, because I stayed active. But many things like my weight training, my, you know, going out for walks and jogs were, I was very deconditioned from that. So I'm having to play this game of building up my stamina and my conditioning again, very slowly because, and this is something we talk to our clients all about, is we don't want to blow past your level of conditioning. We almost want to be just under it. That way your body has the opportunity to adapt and, you know, get better. So this pubic symphysis dysfunction, this like severe pain that I had in my pubic symphysis, you know, really went away just from Avalon getting out of there, which was great. (laughs) But now I notice that when I overwork my body, then this comes back a little bit. And then I think I started getting, when did we start doing MAT on me again? Seven weeks? Yeah, it was probably around the same time that you started up with me. Yeah. So around, because it was, it was definitely before the health summit. And yes. so that, that I know the health summit was eight weeks. Yes. So it may have been even, cause I think you started working out more consistently around six weeks. I want to say it may have even been a touch before that, yeah. that we started doing something we, it wasn't rx we didn't we go did. into rx right away it was, it was one session of not rx yeah we did hips because mm-hmm. i said why don't we test out just working through the hips make sure 
that my body's ready for this. Mm -hmm. And so we worked through the hips Mm -hmm. and I did well with that. So then the next time we jumped back into our Rx because I had been cleared for exercise and all that stuff. So we went into Rx with that. Yeah. And you know what? I've started feeling, I actually, now that we're talking about it, I'm thinking of something else that I started feeling so much better when we started working through it because not only you know obviously reinstating stability in my trunk like clearly my trunk was under intense stress for a long time and but also remember it was hard for me to like sit up straight yep. because and I felt like because of like the breastfeeding and mm-hmm. slouching down and constantly holding you know Avalon in front and I remember getting up to do some of the tests I was like oh my god I could barely sit up straight mm-hmm. so that really helped I felt like with my posture right away yeah. like I remember telling you a couple times like wow, I just feel like I can't like sit up straight and I feel like I can't have nice posture. Like it doesn't feel good to have nice posture or stand up, you know, erect. Right. And as we're talking, I said, I just remembered this because it's funny because when it's not an issue right now, you don't think of it. Exactly. But I remember mm-hmm. that it was an issue. Mm-hmm. So so that's been, that's been really interesting to just, uh, you know, get my system worked on again and be able to work on me systemically yeah. rather than just locally as we were when I was pregnant. Right, exactly. And, you know, seeing kind of how your body changed and adapted from the very end of your pregnancy kind of and then how it recovered through the next, you know, six weeks before we started getting worked on and whatnot. It was just really, really interesting to see and just it felt so bad for you, especially at the end of your pregnancy because like you were saying, it was just so uncomfortable for you to do walking. And I know walking was something that you always really enjoyed doing. And then there was just like this, you just turn this corner where you're like, I just can't do this anymore. And there was very little that we could do to really help with that because like you're saying, we couldn't do great with testing positions. We couldn't do great mm-hmm. as far as, you know, getting to all the muscles that we needed to, to get to and whatnot. But there was a definite change then once you once we got you back on the MAT table and just how quickly your body responded and how how well things came back from a strength perspective and from an output perspective once we got working on you with a consistent basis again and and the the cool thing was is that even though like your body went through this big stress is like things held really well for you it's like we mm-hmm. we worked on them and then like th- you know, we worked on them like one time after and then they just held and they were like good to go and your your body was like oh i've just been waiting for this to have this back and it's like i know how to use these muscles again and boom we're gonna keep using them keep using them and you, you've been really great ever since yeah and this actually makes me think about one of the things we talk about people before they go into the biggest thing we work with in terms of like a big stressor would be like before someone goes into a surgery we always talk to people about hey let's get your muscles tuned up let's make you as resilient as possible Because this is, it really is, you know, a planned injury almost, you know, this is a planned injury to your system. So since we know it's planned, let's get your body ready for this as much as possible. Now, pregnancy is, can also, you know, be planned, whatever, but it's progressive. And I'm so grateful that I did so much before I got pregnant in terms of, you know, being really mindful of my exercise and also getting weekly MAT so that my body was as prepared as it could be. And experiencing what I experienced, especially with the pubic symphysis dysfunction, that was just really, really challenging for me. I think I like cried once a day because it, you know, it really just took away my ability to move. You know, and that was, that was, and moving is so significantly important to me. And I'm so, I don't even know what would have, how I would have felt had I not been doing all these proactive steps. You know, if you would have asked me or if anyone asked me before I got pregnant, like how would pregnancy be for me? Like, oh, you're going to be great. It's going to be so easy. You're going to move great. You're probably going to exercise all the way to the end. And I did do those things, but it didn't mean it didn't come without challenges. And so I'm so glad that I, you know, we were doing so many proactive things, even though I didn't know what I would be preventing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't know what I was going to be optimizing. So I have like full confidence that I went into that as strong as I possibly could. Mm -hmm. And I tried to stay as strong as I could. And it also is interesting because even though MAT didn't solve my symptoms while I was pregnant, 
I still wouldn't have not done MAT. Right. Like I always felt so much better, even though I still wasn't at the place where I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. So it was still optimizing what we could with the muscle system. But I mean, it's not like we're going to take Avalon out, let my body recover <laughs> and then stick her back in for the, right. you know, every week, you know, it, it's just, it's optimizing what we can in mm-hmm. that moment. Exactly. Exactly. And then the other big thing that has been, or was an issue for you, it was your knees. Yeah. And, and, and that's been kind of more of an issue, I guess, as of recent, especially with, you know, your increased running and whatnot, and, you know, the, the goal that you have with running and, and so what we've been seeing kind of on the MAT table and helping kind of optimize your body and get your body back up to par in certain areas for that, the stress has taken off of your knees. Yeah. What's interesting is, and I always think this, whenever there's something bilateral, meaning both sides have got it going on, I always think I always think that it's going to be something that's common between them. For example, like if you're feeling fine, feeling fine, and all of a sudden both your feet start hurting, or you're feeling fine, feeling fine, and both your knees start hurting. It's like, okay, well, did both knees get messed up at the same time? Or is there something that's common between them that has an issue? Meaning like both of your knees feed into one one of the same trunk right or the same pelvis or the same you know upper spine whatever so what I was noticing is that you know just getting up and down out of my rocking chair with with our daughter and then also I'm trying to run more because I thought it would be cool to you know create a physical goal for myself postpartum so I've been trying to jog more just get my conditioning and my training back up for that and my weakest link by far has felt like my knees meaning like my knees were just feeling achy down into my shins. It just felt like my knees weren't being supported. And so I'm not one to really push through pain. I think I'm slightly a baby slash I know too much about MAT and I'm like, yes, yeah, this is not worth it. Like I don't really need to run. So anyways, I'm going to run, do my run only if I feel perfect. Right. So, but even what well, I got worked on yesterday, actually, mm-hmm. I got worked on yesterday and I was like, you know, something's got to happen with my knees. But I, but I knew it wasn't my knees that were an issue. So we ended up working on two rotation motions mm-hmm. in my hips and trunk. And what's amazing about that is if you if you think about your knee, your knees don't rotate. Like they don't twist. Oh, not a whole right? bunch. So there's there's, there's some a there, tiny bit. But we, don't, we normally think of like the front to back. But there's, there's some rotation. Right. There's some rotation. But the huge motion that the knees do is like the bending and straightening, which is not in that rotation motion. So what I think was probably happening was that my knees were trying to pick up more rotation than they have. They have a tiny bit of rotation in them. They were trying to pick up more rotation than they had because my hips weren't rotating well and my trunk wasn't rotating well. So I'm so happy that, you know, I I think I'm not perfect yet with them. I did go running this morning, but they felt so much better. Like I could actually run through, which is super cool. And it is really cool that, that things in my trunk are, have been responding well and holding well, even with that huge stress of the pregnancy. So, yeah. so that's been my second thing and I'm still trucking through with that. And, and my big focus now is I just can't be overdoing it. Mm-hmm. Like I have to, I have to continue to stay under my set point so that I'm not injuring myself. And that's a big thing for a lot of, a lot of our clients is like, yes, when we exercise, we want to push you so that you progress, but we want to push you to a level that's also not making you injured Mm -hmm. because injury is something you have to greatly recover from but exercise that's progressed appropriately is something that you just get to keep building on and i think that's a big misconception in the exercise field in general but definitely when you've gone from someone like me where i was like active active doing things and now i'm having to rebuild you know what i what I had. Yeah, but it's been really neat to that point. It's been really neat kind of seeing how you've been able to rebuild and going through that, even though it might be, you know, a slower process than you want, or it's different than what you're accustomed to, or, you know, you're, you're having to rebuild your strength and everything like that. It's just been really neat seeing how well you've been able to progress and how consistently you've been able to progress by taking the mindset of, hey, this is this is a long-term approach. You know, yeah, you have a goal and you have a, a deadline by which you're trying to hit that goal, but 
you even said, and when you announced that goal, Hey, I'm not going to do it and compromise my joints and compromise my body in the process, right? It's about, okay, how can I make sure that my body is thriving and still be able to hit that goal? And so it's been really neat kind of seeing you progress. And like you were saying, you've been able to progress every single week. And so that consistent progress is just adding up to a massive, massive gain in your strength in your endurance and as opposed to doing trying to do way too much from the get-go having to take a week off from exercise because you're sore and achy and beat up and then you're like okay I'm gonna try it again and overshooting again and then and then that's what we see so often I was talking with somebody earlier today and she's like oh yeah I love working out at you know at this one place it's this group exercise place they do a lot of high intensity stuff she's like because they really push you and she's like but when I first started there you know I could only go once a week because I'd be so achy and beat up after, I felt like I, I just couldn't work out until that next week came around. And it's like, okay, that means that you're working out once and then you have six days where you're not getting health benefits of exercise and your body's actually getting worse. And it's like, is that something that, you know, that's really sustainable? Is that really how you want to be progressing your health is by just like crushing your body and then having a whole week where you have to recover in, in order to be able to, to you know, go crush your body again. And so it's been really neat seeing you take the completely opposite approach to the one that we preach here at Muscle Activation in Schaumburg, this kind of, kind of continuous incremental improvement over time. And and so then the results that you're getting because of that mindset and because of that approach. Well, thank you. It's been a journey, mm -hmm. that's for sure. So again, Charlie and I wanted to do this podcast today because we've really had to live a lot of the lessons that we preach every single day to you guys in our podcast, to our clients. And just to recap some of those that, that we've really had to live out ourselves and have really actually reaped so many of the benefits is that remember, sometimes the local symptoms that you're feeling are not the cause is not in that same local area. Sometimes it can be in a different area and sometimes you just need your body systemically worked on, meaning larger areas of your body worked on so that the stress in that one area that you're feeling symptoms can not be so stressed. Another thing that remember Charlie experienced is we saw how a lot of his little things that were being maintenanced every week when they weren't being maintenance every week turned into something bigger. And so remember when you're feeling, you know, symptoms somewhere, don't wait to see if it goes away and don't wait to see, you know, what happens to it. Oftentimes that's the best time to reach out to your local MAT specialist to see if that can't just be resolved with getting your muscle system tuned up and Maybe that doesn't turn into such a big thing this time. And then the last thing that I've really learned is learning to progress slowly and not blow past what I can currently do. And what this is allowing me to do is not have to be on a continuous cycle of workout and now a week of recovery and work out and then a week of recovery. So keep those three things in mind. And I hope you really enjoyed hearing a little bit more about, you know, Charlie and I's personal physical life so and how we've been working with our workouts and our personal muscle activation techniques sessions. Now, who do you know that needs to hear this episode? Who do you know that has a bunch of kind of chronic aches and pains, chronic tightness, or some really intense stuff going on in a very specific area? and they don't seem to be progressing or getting better at all, all right? Who do you know that has been having all these little things just kind of compound for years and years and years and all of a sudden it feels like a really big thing going on with their body? Share this episode with them so they can learn about, you know, mine and Julie's story and so they can hear about the power that muscle activation techniques has had in our lives with helping our bodies feel and function better. And while you're online, if you wouldn't mind, head on over to iTunes and leave us a rating and review. It helps other people find this podcast who are looking for information on exercise, who are looking for information on health, and it helps us spread this message. So if you found value in this, if you could please take a couple minutes, give us a five-star rating, write us a review. It helps tremendously when other people are searching for it. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Have a fantastic week, and we'll talk with you all next week. Thank you.